Mexican boxing legend Juan Manuel Marquez says that he rates Canelo, but he puts him at number three behind Lomachenko, and number one is Terrence Crawford, pound for pound. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Shout out to everybody that purchased UFC 254 from me, ESPN+. Plus. You can still sign up. There's a lot of great content. Um, I'm sure they'll add the fights or highlights or whatnot too as well. Last night, Canelo knocked out Sergey Kovalev. I told you Kovalev, you know, he didn't seem as fresh as some of the other light heavyweights, but it was still a move up for Canelo so congrats to Canelo on 11th round knockout you know the fight was pretty uh, doldrum up until the the knockout and you know Canelo did what he had to do he becomes a four division champion which to me is questionable because the three weight classes that he had previously conquered or become champion is he got a secondary belt he beat Rocky Fielding so instead of beating a guy like Caleb Smith, who knocked out Rocky Fielding one round, you beat Rocky Fielding, who fought for a vacant title against the unknown guy. Nonetheless, that's what it is. That's what they're billing it as. And Juan Manuel Marquez was one of the commentators, and you know he was there to witness the fight. He gave Canelo his props. He said Canelo looked pretty good. He said Kovalev. He he kind of seen this coming because Kovalev, um, you know, basically aging. He said Kovalev was tentative to throw because of Canelo did pretty good with the counter punching. But the link in the description so you guys can watch the interview. Um, the reporter was kind of pushing, asking, is Canelo up there with the, the great historic Mexican fighters and boxers of yesteryear? And Marquez kind of said, like, oh, yeah, you, you can start putting him up there. You can start putting uh, Canelo up there. And then the reporter kept pushing and said something to the effect of to Marquez, is he as good as you? Like, you know, do you put him up there with what you've accomplished? And you could tell Marquez, he was like, he at first he was kind of being nice and you could tell he didn't want to answer the question. So to me, you know, you got to watch the interview. But for me, the way I perceived it was he, he didn't want to, he didn't really want to answer the question because he was like, um, um, I, 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 I think I, I don't know. <laughs> like he didn't answer the question. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't think he rates Canelo with the historic Mexican greats as high as himself and Eric Morales and Barrera and, you know, Salvador Sanchez, Chavez Jr. or senior Julio Cesar Chavez. But that's just my personal take. You guys can watch the video and tell me what you think. But one thing he did say later on where he was talking about the performance, he said he can he's seen the knockout. He can predict that. Um, so props to Canelo. But he was asked about pound for pound. He says he places Canelo in at number three, Lomachenko at number two, and number one pound for pound, he has Terrence Crawford. Now, I know this is going to make a lot of people mad. You have a Mexican boxing legend, you know, made a lot of money in the sport, had a great saga with Pacquiao, punctuated by the Manny Pacquiao knockout in the fourth fight. And now you have Marquez, who is saying that he doesn't have Canelo number one pound for pound. Some people are running with it. Listen, Canelo should absolutely be on people's top five pound for pound list. I have no problem with that. Um, skillfully, in my opinion, I still put... Terrence Crawford because again I I I have Terrence Crawford first of all people are going to immediately try to go to the resume Terrence Crawford he's a, he's at a kind of a deficit he's not the the face of boxing like Canelo and a lot of his contemporaries are on PBC plus he's a dangerous out so top rank even when they had Manny Pacquiao they kept Bob Arum told you he did a, it literally did an interview and said he he made sure that fight didn't happen. You know, he recently did it. You guys can Google it. He said, no, no way. You know what would happen. 
So Terrence Crawford hasn't been given the the same opportunities. Canelo can handpick anybody in boxing, you know, and they'll probably take the fight. They'll take the opportunity, the paycheck, etc. So if, if Terrence Crawford could hand select and say, hey, I'm fighting Danny Garcia next. I'm fighting Errol Spence with no politics involved, you know, and make the call, then, you know, those fights will happen because, you know, Terrence Crawford's pedigree. But beyond that, I think skillfully, Crawford shows more separation in his fights. Like, look at the Kovalev fight. Yeah, you could say it ended in a knockout. To me, it looked weird. That's just my honest opinion. It looked like something was up, like, you know, be it fixed or rehydration clause or something. You know, we never seen Kovalev fight so scary and tentative. He was the bigger man, but he fought like the smaller man. He's killed a man in the ring, but he fought like he had never faced a puncher like Canelo. It's just it, the whole setup was weird. That's my personal opinion. But beyond that, the fight, even though Kovalev wasn't looking dazzling, like he didn't look like Crusher Kovalev. Yet and still, with his height, his size, his frame and his reach and a simple jab, he was able to thwart and slow down Canelo drastically to the point where Canelo, who normally has a good, entertaining, you know, eye gouging type of style, Canelo was getting booed. And, you know, people, oh, you're hating. Listen. You don't have to take my word for it. Go watch the telecast. If you have the zone, go run it back. They have it up there. Canelo was being booed. We haven't really seen Canelo be booed because usually he puts on entertaining fights. But that closing the distance and, and getting the range on the bigger man, Canelo was missing more wildly than we were used to seeing. His accuracy wasn't there. And then on top of that, Kovalev fought different than, than he's fought for whatever reason, you know whether he was washed or, you know, whatever, the rehydration clause fixed, whatever. Some reason he decided to fight in a way we've never seen. So it just made for a lackluster fight up until the knockout. The knockout was cool. And that's a highlight reel. That's what they're going to, you know, put on Canelo's future highlight reels. But probably not too many other shots from rounds one through five or six and seven and stuff. Just watch when they make highlight reels. They're not going to include long, you know, clips from, most of the fight because it wasn't even that type of fight so to me that's just what it is so terrence crawford absolutely i put him i agree with juan manuel marquez i know it's gonna hurt people's feelings they're gonna say oh ego you're hating which whatever i don't care what you think about me and they're gonna say marquez is oh marquez is, look i predict this new media they're gonna say oh juan manuel marquez and nacho Berestein all they do is hate on canelo and they've been hating for so long but he's telling you his opinion and why he feels that way you know this new society we live in such a pc society and such a sensitive society where the new norm is if you're telling the truth or speaking your your truth and your honest opinion whether you can support it or not they just label you a hater you know and it's it's pretty bland and it's pretty pretty basic because you can say Marquez, okay, let's just say Marquez and Nacho Berestein just are jealous for whatever reason, despite all of what Marquez accomplished in his career, beating Pacquiao, beating Michael Katsidis, fighting Chris John, you know, fighting Barrera, right? Beating and knocking out Juan Diaz when in a fight like to, for the lightweight supremacy, fighting Floyd Mayweather, you know, despite all these things, despite all those things, let's just say those two are jealous eric morales just said something very similar he just said canelo you know he's um picking people when they're deteriorating and at the end of their rope and what do you want to be remembered as this is what he said so he's a hater too chavez senior you know espn elos Gopez. you know we've we've seen a ton of people from where canelo is from and they're saying the same thing right so you can't just blame everybody for allegedly being jealous of Canelo. Oh, they're just jealous because he's making money. There's more to life than just merely making money. So when it comes to the pound for pound, it is subjective. Canelo should be on the pound for pound top three. That's fine. But I still have Crawford ahead of him. Um, again, you have to you have to understand there's powers that be 
and there's factors at play with politics. Canelo can single-handedly hand select anybody in boxing and get a fight. If he said, hey, Charlo, here's a reasonable deal, reasonable money, a reasonable contract, then he can get the Charlo fight. Terrence Crawford is not in that position where he can just dictate all terms because he's the face of boxing or whatever. But if he was, you know, he would be targeting the best, you know, and, and again, Canelo's fights have a lot of stipulations and clauses and different things like that. So um, my personal opinion, I would put Canelo above Lomachenko, though, just because Canelo has, you know, he just knocked out Kovalev and he has way more fights than Lomachenko. They both only have one loss. But he has way more volume of fight. The reason why, like if I'm doing pound for pound, why I'd put Crawford, like Marquez is doing, put him before, is the separation. You know, Canelo, in my honest opinion, versus Kovalev, he didn't look sensational. He didn't. He did not look sensational up until the end. You know, he was closing the distance in spots, but overall, it wasn't like he was blowing me away. He was like showing this crazy. Um, you know, like even if you look at um, Mikey Garcia and Errol Spence, Errol Spence didn't lose really a second of the of the fight, bro. He totally controlled him. And I'm not saying every fight's going to be like that, but you look through Canelo's whole catalog and a lot of his fights are very close. You know, there are a lot of them are close. The Edison de Lada could have went either way. You know, what people say, I think Lada won that fight. Austin Trout, you know, besides the open scoring, there was a very competitive fight. I mean, he got whitewashed by um, a lopsided loss to Mayweather. So he got washed by him. But everything else, Cotto fight was pretty close. And see, this is the other thing. This is the other thing where I have to put Crawford ahead is Crawford is not. He's doing this off of skill. There's been times where Crawford is at the size disadvantage. Now, you could say he was at a size disadvantage in the Kovalev fight. You know, there's been a couple opportunities, but there's also been weight stipulations with rehydration. There's been Crawford fights where Julius Ndongo, Victor Postal was a unification. Those were bigger men than him. And there was no Terrence Crawford imposed clauses and rules. Imagine if if Terrence Crawford fought Victor Postal in that HBO pay-per-view unification and he he controlled and dictated to Victor Postal's side and said, hey, I'm Bud Crawford. If you want to fight me, then you got to do the Bud Crawford weigh-in tomorrow and you can only gain six pounds because they're in the lighter division. You can only gain seven pounds. And he controlled what the hell, how Victor Postal um, replenished and hydrated, rehydrated. You know, this is what Canelo's t team frequently does. And, like, you look at the fights with the Cotto. He fought Cotto. He looked 22 pounds bigger than Cotto. He looked way bigger than Cotto. That's not the case in every Terrence Crawford fight, you know. And then when Canelo is at a size dis disadvantage, his team is overly strategizing and instilling all these weight stipulations. Like, for example... And this is why I think Canelo is going to have a difficult time from here on out because people are catching on to it. New media. This is why they're going to have a hard time resonating with Canelo like some of the other people because other people, they're not leaving themselves open for criticism with their performances and how they're going about their wins. And this is why I think some of the classic, you know, forefathers from Mexico, Mexican boxing, aren't receiving Canelo exactly the same way as Salvador Sanchez or Chavez Jr. I mean, Chavez Sr. I don't know why I keep saying Chavez Jr. Chavez Sr., etc. right? And it's because, let's look at Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz had everything against him and still somehow knocked out Joshua in a phenomenal performance. That's greatness. I gave Andy Ruiz every single round versus Joshua. Joshua was bigger. He was supposed to be stronger. He was supposed to be the A-side. He was the A-side. He was supposed to be the stud. It was a DAZN card. He had a full 16-week camp. And Joshua had gay, had a 16-week camp. He only had, Ruiz only had a five-week camp. And he blasted Joshua out of there. So based on everything being stacked against Andy Ruiz, 
There's no way you can even take away credit. Andy Ruiz didn't request a rehydration clause. He didn't mandate that Joshua, you know, fight at a catch weight or everything stacked against him. And he still pulled out the victory and dominated. Canelo versus Kovalev, he moved up, right? He didn't look his traditional self. He didn't look as accurate. He was missing wildly. He looked a little bit more sluggish and slower and, you know, miraculously gets this knockout in the 11th round. It just wasn't that type of performance. It wasn't a dominating performance. Meanwhile, Terrence Crawford moves up. There's a guy that beat Pacquiao and Jeff Horn, bigger than him, stronger than him, right? And people are going to get mad at that comparison. But Jeff Horn beat Pacquiao. I thought Pacquiao could have won that fight. I thought he did win the fight, but they gave it to him. So he's living like a champion. He had a title defense and Crawford was coming up in weight, right? And that's just a weird, he has a weird style being a bigger man and a puncher then and Crawford dogged him every round and then stopped him. You get what I'm saying? Meanwhile, Kovalev almost got stopped in his last fight. Yes, Kovalev has a better resume than Jeff Horn. We know that. You know, he would be rated higher than the Jeff Horn. But the point I'm making is stylistically, you know, we I told you that Kovalev has more of that Eastern European style where he doesn't throw hooks. He's, he's predictable. He's slow. He has no inside fight game. These types of things. So this was always a fight that favorite like versus if you. OK, if Canelo were to face Zordo Ramirez, that is a tough, tall rugged fighter from mexico so i think canelo and his team strategically avoid styles because they know certain styles is going to give canelo a tougher fight so for example when have you ever watched a zordo ramirez fight where he doesn't throw body shots now if he's throwing body shots with long arms six two and a half and he's been calling canelo out right and you moved up to 75 and you start getting tired you're getting in tired with the volume puncher who has a chin who's bigger than you then what do you do versus kovalev who's had stamina issues etc you know same thing with like a guy like david benavidez caleb smith charlos demetrius andrade these guys all have showed a better gas tank and been fresher than these than kovalev and they haven't been stopped literally everybody i just named zordo ramirez david benavidez charlo andrade billy joe saunders right archer better be that is six different people caleb smith that is seven different fighters all bigger than canelo you know most of them punchers most of them have good cardio or at least have shown good cardio so you you don't fight none of them but you fight the guy that's been stopped twice just like jacobs got stopped and some of his performances were uh, like real close and he lost to golovkin recently this is all a strategy if I'm lying, then let's see Canelo fight somebody like Better Beav. Better Beav is coming off a great win, a unification win. And if he feels good at 175 and he's capable, Canelo's team said Kovalev was the best light heavyweight. All right. So in your mind, you knocked off the best light heavyweight. You knocked off the, the, the snake head, you know the top of the totem pole let's see if he fights a lesser fighter and better be if, if that's what you feel but you know that's likely to not happen and you know why dimitri bevo that's an eighth fighter so i agree with juan manuel Marquez. deal with it new media so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing